Welcome back to Otaku no Video as always. Thank you very much for joining me where today I'm reviewing an anime series with a difficult name and a weird premise um, that is definitely not for everyone called Sengoku Choju Giga. Yes, it's hard to pronounce. It is actually referring back to some picture scrolls that are several hundred years old in Japan, many hundreds of years old in Japan. They look kind of like what you see behind me. And they are um, basically illustrations of um, anthropomorphic animals sort of interacting. The, this series I'm talking about is a recent anime series from 2017 in which various historical Japanese characters, especially those around the Warring States period, are represented as anthropomorphic animals and drawn and shown um, in this picture style. So the show, the entire show looks like this. It's got a bunch of, you know, animals interacting as essentially telegraphic illustrations of walking, talking animals. It's really weird. Um, it, it's a really weird premise. And it is a screwball comedy, basically, um, done in a few minutes episode, so each episode is only a few minutes long. Um, so we'll just start there. That this is basically about um, warring states, you know, samurai and and well known people in Japanese history, uh, told in a ridiculous way. So you're combining an unusual artistic vision with an with a wacky perspective and, and a wacky. Um, way of talking and presenting those characters. So, yeah. Um, well, let, me, let me talk about the animation here for a second and how it visually comes across. Um, the animation is simple. And I don't mean bad because every drawing is gorgeous to my mind. You do an amazing job of, of expressing with these characters through how they are drawn and how they, um, how their bodies are positioned. Uh, there's so much character and so much emotion in these characters, just with a simple line here and there. It's really impressive, especially because they're going with essentially black and white illustrations. Um, this, the characters felt like individual personalities in a very real and effective way. Uh, that said, the animation is, again, simple. Um, they're not trying to go for really smooth, um, naturalistic, sort of Ghibli-style animation. Um, but it's not limited animation either. This is something where um, it is like somebody has taken a, wall, a picture scroll, and you know, they're, they've, they've taken out bits and redrawn bits to show you where the different characters are. It's, it's, it's an impressive work, technically, for something that cannot have been drawn like a traditional animation. This is an important thing to understand. Whenever you make something that's not standard, everyone on staff has to learn how to do that. So the fact that the animation in this is as consistent as it is, it's very consistent actually, um, and gets across what it does with this kind of visual style is just really, really darn impressive. Um, now the pacing also take, uh, takes a little getting used to. It's, um, it's a screwball comedy, but it has this very... Um, careful sense of pacing, where sometimes it's very slow and deliberate, and it builds up slowly to a particular punchline. Sometimes it's throwing things at you very quickly, um, as you have sort of essentially a comedy routine being thrown at you. Um, it's one of the nice things about it, actually, is because you've got lots of different characters here potentially interacting with each other, although most segments involve only three or four characters. They fit the content appropriately to that material. Um, and again, just very impressed with how, how they're able to pull all that together. Um, I should point out the characters are comedic versions of historical characters. They're not trying to be historically accurate here. They are showing very much caricatures of these people as, um, as befits a comedic you know, take on them. It's also one of the, the, the slightly difficult things for an American audience um, there's a bit of an assumption that you know what these characters' personalities are supposed to be like, and thus that makes the parody all the funnier. 
So sometimes characters will show up and they'll do something and it's clear you're supposed to find what they're doing funny because you're supposed to know what their personality actually was in real life. So that can be a little a, a little jarring sometimes where it just, um, you know, it, it can't start every episode by explaining, here's what the personality of this historical character actually was, thus the joke, right? So just, you know, kind of be aware of that. Uh, the voice acting in this also um, is worth noting uh, because... The, the voice actors don't have much time to get into character. With a set of short, you know, episodes, and with a large cast, most characters have very little screen time. And I thought they did a, uh, an impressive job, all told, being in character. You're not probably, or at least I'll put it this way, I couldn't say that I distinctly remember any individual character's voice. You know, it, nobody is really a breakout voice actor in this. Um, but they do a, a, per, a perfectly fine job of getting across the characters. And again, it's a comedy. So they have to have the right um, comedic pacing for the show to make that work, as opposed to really getting in deep to, you know, the, uh, the depth of character, emotion, and personality. Um, this is much more about comedy than anything else. So, again, effective, um, not hugely memorable, but, you know, no problems there. And I think it's, it's a great way of kind of explaining Sengoku Choju Giga in general. Is Again, it's, it's a ridiculous concept with ridiculous comedy, but I can remember it pretty darn well. It sticks with me, partly for the visuals, and also partly because of that crisp comedy, where they know how to deliver that at the right time and with um, just the right elements. And oddly, choosing this visual style really helps the comedy. You're not distracted by lots of flashy animation, lots of bright colors. Um, you're allowed to watch the characters, see what, they're, see what they're doing, see how they are positioned relative to each other. And then let the comedy flow from the dialogue and from, you know, where a character is moving from one spot to another and you realize, oh, there, you know, something's going on there. Um, but it's, I found it just ultimately really fun. And I think that's one of the important things for any kind of comedy is that it should feel fun. This does. It's definitely not for everyone. It's a distinctive brand of comedy. It's based on historical characters that you're not necessarily going to gonna grok all of, but it's an interesting one. So, FYI, that's is, that. Uh, generally available, streaming on Crunchyroll, and um, you should not have a problem finding it. So, those are my thoughts. Hope you find that helpful, and hope you will be back for more videos. Thank you. See you then.